Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Daily Mark Report brought to you by Mike Bjork. Today is Friday. Happy Friday, everyone, and it is September 27th. We got a lot of data to go over today, so we're just going to jump right into it on that and on my calendar here. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, sorry about the small print here. It's primarily because there's so much there that and kept it on the same page here. Uh, but the, to read it off here, we got the durable goods orders for the month of August. So in July, there is a 2% increase in durable goods orders, which is good. In August, it was expected to contract by 0.7%. Uh, However, it still expanded a little bit. It dropped, but it expanded by 0.2% instead of contracting, which is obviously still a good sign here. Now, if you take out the big ticket items like transportation, uh, it dropped in July by, it contracted by half a percent. However, in August, it was expected to go up 0.1% and it went up half a percent, which is uh, better than expectations. So, however, both of them were better than expectations, which is obviously a good sign here. Um, we also got personal con personal income for the month of August. So in July, personal income only rose 0.1%. However, in August, it was expected to rise by 0.5%, and it rose 0.4%. So slightly under expectations, but it did rise a little bit further, which is obviously a good sign. And then we also got uh, consumer spending. I'm not sure why that got moved here, but I want to go touch on that uh, other not, uh, you know, spending and uh, income uh, first. So um, in July, it rose a half a percent. And forecast for uh, spending in August was 0.3% and only 0.1%. Uh, so people are making more money but spending less. So obviously people, you know, with some of the news coming in, the sentiment had dropped a little bit. It's possible that people might be uh, socking away money uh, for future reference in case maybe the economy does slow down. So it's not a bad sign, but of course, to keep the economy rolling, we need uh, people spending money here. Now to kind of move up further, uh, we have consumer sentiment here. And the last report came in at 92. It dropped quite a bit. It was like 94 or somewhere on there. Uh, or it was a bit higher, and it dropped to 92. And the forecast was supposed to remain at 92, and it actually increased a little bit here at 93.2. Uh, so this is the final number here for consumer, uh, consumer sentiment for the month of September. Now we get uh, the big one for this uh, week, uh, cons personal consumption expenditure. This is the PCE, the Fed's favorite gauge for inflation. This is the item that we've been kind of waiting for all week, uh, as we had talked uh, earlier in the week that could raise some caution here. Now, in July, it rose 0.2%. Forecast was called for 0.2% in August as well. However, it was basically 0%. So it's year over year uh, remained at 1.4%. However, when you strip out the food and energy, this is what we re, uh, really look at, the most important uh, data, which is the core PC, or also known as real inflation, as it's stuff. Now here, it went up 0.2% in July. Forecast called for 0.1% in August, and it went up 0.1%. Now, July's uh, year over year was revised higher. It went from one6 to 1.7%, and now, in August, it went up to 1.8%. So we did see this creep up a little bit on there. And this is what we were kind of concerned about earlier in the week due to seeing the CPI going up. And this could spook the markets. However, uh, as you'll see here in a little bit, uh, markets aren't quite as spooked as we thought. Uh, it could change you know, as they absorb all the data information. But right now, stocks are mixed. Uh, impeachment talk is kind of getting kind of moved to the side uh, a little bit here. They're until they see something a little bit more dark uh, that could threaten the presidency. They're kind of you know they've been kind of through this uh, before that you know all these threats uh, have been coming in there and talk about impeachment. Uh, it's kind of being put to the side a little bit. They're kind of watching it, but you know it's it doesn't seem anything like there's anything really there. Now China and U.S. trade uh, update. It looks like they had uh, planned with the higher ups uh, October 10th and 11th in Washington D.C. That there'll be the Vice Premier He Liu He, I think it is, uh, uh, announced he'll be here along with some of his other delegates uh, to negotiate. Uh, hopefully, maybe uh, finish it up the trade. Also, there's talk that uh, China is upping some of their uh, uh, goods to purchase here in the U.S., which is nice. However, uh, some negative stuff that came out a little bit is that uh, President Trump may not be is reluctant to extend the time of U.S. businesses doing business with Huawei. So that could create uh, further tensions. 
So that is out there as well. Now there's a couple of Fed speakers will be out later today. Uh, so far we haven't had as much of an impact uh, from the Fed spec speakers, but today, depending if they touch on inflation, uh, that could be uh, a market mover or not. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the uh, bond market. Bond market is currently up about five basis points. We're still below the 50-day moving average. So basically, we're kind of the sideways pattern. We don't. Um, we're, so mortgage rates are unchanged. There's no change in mortgage rates. And then, and as you can see here, it's looking like we could have a slight crossover here. So we got to kind of watch this here, see if um, you know if this continues here, if it's going to cross over and we go the opposite direction, or if we go. Um, Go sideways, or how we're gonna work, how this is gonna move. Uh, Ten-year Treasury, uh, kind of the same thing. You can see the black and red line here, stochastic count, moving in the same direction. We are up slightly. We're up about 1.7 right now on the yields here, and still in between its 50 and 25-day moving averages. So again, mortgage rates unchanged for the day. Now, if you guys are looking to refinance or uh, buy here in California, uh, please reach out. I am a mortgage planner with the Pinnacle Home Mortgage. Home loans, love to be able to help you guys out. Best way to reach me is either uh, direct message me or email me. Uh, I do get tied up on the phone, so I can't always answer, take every call, but uh, I am uh, very responsive via email or direct message. So those are the best ways. We have quite a variety of loan programs and can provide the best solution for you. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. You guys enjoy your weekend ahead, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.